Hello guys and welcome to the Mighty Blues YouTube channel. I am your host for today, Jebo37. How are we all doing now? I'm going to mock this a bit and say, Cam, thank you so much for having me on the channel. Hope you've enjoyed the intro. I did mock the intro a bit, but it is what it is. Um, shout out to Caden Smith, who's boxing on Thursday for Anfield ABC. Get that first round knockout, my mate. You deserve that. You know, if you've worked hard enough for it, then... Knock him dead, my mate. Um, obviously, Cam, I do hope you get better soon as well. Uh, you know, obviously, fighting off a virus at the moment is not too good. But hopefully, you're fitting no time to get back on these YouTube videos, my mate. Keep smashing the content as you are doing. And, yeah, for you guys who don't know me, I am Jebo37. I do match day vlogs, whether it's Everton FC content related or if Everton aren't playing to go to a different ground and, you know, explore there, you know. Um, I was at Stockport County on Monday, Wrexham on Friday, and then obviously I was at the Everton United game vlogging that as well. And I'll also be there tonight at Goodison Park for Everton FC versus Leicester, which is the preview. Yeti Mina is back. Now, for the fella that I call cheese string legs, glass legs, whatever you want to call them, if we bring him into the team, will he be injured after 10 minutes and be forced to use a substitute? I don't know. I don't know. But... Can't dwell on the negatives. We can only focus on the positives. Now, I am going to make one change in my predicted Everton team, which is, you know, you can probably guess where I'm coming from when I say this, but I'll mention that a bit later on. We're going to speak about Leicester and their form at the moment. Now, they've got seven points in the last five Premier League games, and the last three games, to mention, are the one-all draw against United away from home, a 2-1 win versus Crystal Palace at home and a 2-1 loss against Newcastle away where is it Bruno Guamares or Guamares or whatever his name is the Brazilian the holding midfielder centre midfielder for Newcastle United put it in the back of the net well you got to brace that game to be fair to think so but it's not just focusing on the home games for Leicester, it's also focusing on the away form. And the away form shows us this for Leicester City. They've got four points in the last five away games. Now, in the last five away games, in no particular order, they've played Arsenal, Wolves, Burnley, Man United and Newcastle. Getting beat by Newcastle, drawing against Man United, beating Burnley, which is kind of stating the obvious there. You know, getting beat by Wolves and also getting beat by Arsenal. My thoughts on Leicester's form, it, it, you can't you can't really dwell thoughts on that. And the reason why I say this is because we could do the most Everton thing possible and end up in the relegation zone come Derby Day after the Derby. Now, for me, as it stands, I haven't got a ticket to the Derby. Um, and my phone will be getting switched off the moment the Derby game kicks off unless we win the game. Um, it, it is what it is really, but I, I'm not too optimistic and I'll tell you why in terms of my uh, thoughts on Everton and the confidence going into the game. So my thoughts on Everton as a whole this season, we've been shocking and it, it's obviously stating the obvious, it, it it's really is, you know what, uh, Rafa Benitez is in charge for the most part until January and then Lampard comes in before deadline day, he makes a couple of signings, Deli Ali and co, you know, brings in Donny van der Beek on loan. Which is good signs to be fair, but I feel like he's finding it hard to integrate Deli Alli into the side at the moment, but it is what it is in that. But in terms of how I feel, we can't be overly optimistic. And the reason why I say this is because Leicester aren't a side to be pushed over. They've played in Europe, went to Newcastle, and now they come to us, but we've had that rest period. So you can feel a bit more brightened up, a bit more optimistic in in terms of how we're feeling in terms of freshness of the players you know we haven't just travelled to you know PSV or wherever Leicester have just been and then have to travel to Newcastle and then travel to Goodison Park so we can win the game there's no saying we can't but the first thing I will say is as a fan base we do need to unite and get behind the team and just stuff like that really Um it depends on the lineup as well tactically if Lampard gets it right now I'm always Lampard in, but some games lately you do have to question tactics. And I apologise if I sound overly negative, but when people come up to me and say, oh, you should stay up, you should stay up, I personally at the moment, with our fixtures remaining, 
left in the season and the fact that Burnley have tried to do some tactical manager sacking to get like a bounce back from the players you've got to look at it as come the end of Derby Day we could be in the relegation zone you know say if we get beat to Leicester by somewhat do you know what I mean the players don't put a performance in they get complacent they do the most everything thing possible and then we get absolutely smashed the Liverpool away from home Something I don't really like saying, something I'm not really going to speak about, but we need to keep positive. Now, we'll move on to my starting prediction, um, predicted starting 11 for the game against Leicester. Now, I've gone for one change and one change only, which puts Yeri Mina in for Michael Keane. Um, I've also want to include Don, um, Donny van der Beek on the bench. I feel like, obviously, you know, he's he's been injured and obviously he's... His misses are the baby, which congratulations to Donny van der Beek, by the way. But then obviously he couldn't play against Man United as well due to, you know, the loan agreement and all that stuff. So, we'll go into predicted starting 11 of Jordan Pickford in goal, which is stating the obvious. Seamus Coleman right back. Yeri Mina and Ben Godfrey as the centre-halves. Um, I'll drop Michael Keane. I'll explain about Michael Keane in a minute. Anyone who knows me knows I've got a proper hatred for Michael Keane. As most people probably do this season. But, Mikalenko left back, which leaves him at field three of Alan, Delph and the Wobia Fords. Delph was exceptional, man. He was absolutely phenomenal against Manchester United. To be fair, you could probably say the ten of the players that were starting in that game were phenomenal against Manchester United. And the only one that I would say that wasn't and looked half arsed was Dominic Carver at Lewin, but... I'm not going to start an agenda. Um, so, obviously, we we'll mentioned Alan Delph and Awobi in the midfield. You know, Awobi's also been sensational under Frank Lampard. You know, he, he's shown that he wants to be there. He's shown that he wants to play and put in the efforts and be hungry and press and leave everything on the line, which leaves Anthony Gordon and Richarlison on the wings with Dominic Calvert Lewin up front in a 4 3 3. Now, people are going to say to me, Jebo, you said that Dominic Carvert Lewin looked half fast against Manchester United. Why is he in your predicted starting eleven? And that for me is I've based this starting eleven on what Lampard would go for. Now, look at this logically. Dominic Carvert Lewin will always get ahead of Solomon Rondon as much as people don't want to say it. It it will happen. You know, unless he puts the Marty Gray on the wing and plays with Charleston as the number nine, which I, I really can't see happening. Now my hatred towards Michael Keane, where does that start? I mean, I mean, does it really start anywhere? He's probably, he's not, he's not the worst centre-back, but he's not the best. You know, Yeri Mean is our best centre-half, but gets injured 10 minutes into a game, so it swings and roundabouts really, isn't it? But, what is my prediction scoreline for the game? And I'm going to go for an Everton 3, Leicester 2. I, I, as much as I say Dominic Calvert Lewin looked half arsed against United, I'd love to see him on the score. She'd get a bit of confidence. You know, obviously, I feel like he's lacking confidence at the moment. And, you know, obviously, he's been injured for a, a lot, a lot, really. He's been on and off with injuries and stuff like that. So. You know, and he had that penalty miss against Brighton as well. So I would love to see him actually get on the score sheet. So I'll go Dominic Carver, Lewin, Anthony Gordon, and let's go Fabian Delph. Let's go with sh like a shot in the dark and just go Fabian Delph to score for Everton Football Club. But it'd be good to see. Hopefully, we get an absolute another performance like Manchester United at home because that was phenomenal. The players have to fight. They've really got to fight. And it, it comes to a big part of that where if they don't fight, you know, they're going to get booed very quickly. And we all know this will happen as much as we try and help them along. The only people that can't help themselves are themselves. We can only do so much as fans. So hopefully the lads are up for it. We all want them to be up for it. Let's keep the faith. Let's prove me wrong, actually. Let's prove me wrong and my state of mind wrong. To say that I'm not overly confident. Let's take it game by game. And if we get beat, we could end up in the relegation zone. So, 
prove me wrong and then go tomorrow, tweet me on Twitter or whatever, at Jebo37 on Twitter and go, do you know what Jebo, you're wrong mate, you're absolutely wrong, you know, proved, you, proved you're wrong, and do you know what, I'm, I'll be more happy with that, being proved wrong by the state of mind at the moment, because I don't really want to do the most evident thing at the moment, got to be up for this dog fight and it's still a long, long way to go, I know we're in April, season finishes May, but, you know, it's still a long way to go in my eyes. But I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway, guys. The match preview and all that stuff. Um, go check out my Twitter and my YouTube. Links to that will be down in the description down below. Cam, as I say, mate, I hope you get better soon, my man. You can leave some nice comments into the um, comment section down below for Cam. It'd be absolutely amazing. Um, Caden as well, mate. Another shout out to you. Go knock them dead, my mate. First round knockout, my man up the top, he's la. And yeah, hopefully we get a result tomorrow, a much, much deserved result. Put the fight in, show the passion, show that we're hungry and eager to play. And let's make it a beautiful week for us all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, make sure you like, subscribe and tap the bell for more notifications on Cam's videos. For as and when he does upload, I know he uploads a lot more than what I do. And he's much more committed to the cause than I am in terms of what he does. You know, he puts the effort in with the match reactions, instant match reactions, player ratings. This probably isn't a Cam review because Cam is a lot more knowledgeable up and up there than I am, to be fair. He, he's got the knowledge, he's got everything. Whereas I'll prepare something, speak about it and give my thoughts on something, really. But if you want anything... um Cam is the man to go to for your Everton FC content for match review, player ratings, um, instant match reactions and all that good stuff. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And yeah, guys, if you go in the game, enjoy the game tonight. Up the toffees. And yeah, see you guys on another video. And Cam, thank you so much for having us on the channel, my mate.